Good morning and welcome to the fifth meeting in 2016 of the Health and Sport Committee. <coughs> I'd ask everyone at this point to switch off mobile phones as they can often interfere with the sound system. But also note that there the are many of us here uh, using uh, tablet devices instead of their hard copies of their papers. Um, our first item uh, uh, on the agenda today is stage two consideration of the health, tobacco, nicotine, etc. and Care Scotland Bill. And can I welcome uh, the, the Minister, Maureen Watt, Minister for Public Health. Uh, welcome, Minister. She's accompanied by Claire McDermott, Bill Team Manager, Siobhan Mackay, Tobacco Control Team, David Wilson, Solicitor's, Solicitor's Office, Food, Children, Education and Social Care Team and Meryl Skeen, um, Parliamentary Council, and uh, uh, all from the Scottish Government. Um, everybody, everyone should have a copy of the bill as introduced, the master list of amendments and the groupings of amendments. Uh, there will be one debate on each group of amendments. I will call the member who lodged the first amendment in that group to speak to and move that amendment and to speak to all other amendments in the group. Members who have not lodged amendments in the group but who wish to speak should indicate, uh, by catching my attention in the usual way, uh, the debate uh, on the group will be concluded by me giving, by me inviting uh, the member who moved the first amendment in the group to wind up. Um, only committee members. Um, uh, are allowed to vote. M voting is by the, uh, uh, in any division is by a show of hands. Um, the committee is required to indicate formally that uh, it is considered uh, and, and agreed in each section to schedule a bill, and so I will put the question on each section at the appropriate point. We're all here now. Good. Um, no, 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 you're fine. You're fine. Um, so uh, I, I refer to the Marshall list now, and uh, the first question we have this morning is that sections one to seven uh, uh, be agreed. Are we all agreed? Yes. Thank you. I now call amendment 13 in the name of Malcolm Chisholm, grouped with amendments 14, 15 and 16. Malcolm Chisholm to move amendment 13 and speak to all amendments in the group. Uh, thank you, convener. I mean, it's interesting that although there were different views about uh, nicotine vapour products or, or e-cigarettes, as we commonly call them, th there wasn't actually um, a lot of disagreement about what was actually in this legislation. But one area where there were concerns expressed was in relation to the register. And I suppose the fundamental concern of people who saw the positive side of uh, e-cigarettes in terms of smoking cessation was that the uh, single register would result in a conflation in uh, the public mind of uh, tobacco products and uh, NVPs um, or e-cigarettes. So uh, there was quite a lot of discussion about this in the oral evidence and indeed the written evidence and it was picked up in our stage one report. I think Cancer Research UK, who I'm sure we all respect highly um, went the furthest on this because they didn't want to have a register at all. They were so concerned that it might send out negative messages about the potential of NBPs to, um, to um, um, allow people to uh, stop uh, smoking uh, and thereby um, obviously uh, uh, improve uh, their health. But others expressed uh, this in the oral evidence. For example, Professor Linda Bold, who's done a great deal of work in this area, said, I do not think that the same register should be used for sellers of NBPs and sellers of tobacco. It should certainly not be presented as the same register because they are not the same products. We need to do much more to get rid of tobacco from Scottish society. We should definitely not focus on trying to get rid of e-cigarettes because they might save some people's lives. And Sheila Duffy of Ash, again, another organisation that I'm sure we all respect, highly said that she agreed that the register should look different for retailers who register to sell NBPs because that might help to distinguish uh, the product. So we obviously heard and read quite a lot in this area and picked up on this in our committee report at um, section 59 of our own report. We said... 
A number of submissions highlighted concerns about NVP retailers being included within the tobacco register as it could send a confusing message that NVPs are as harmful as tobacco. Some called for NVP retailers to be listed in an entirely separate register or for a register to be created for retailers of age-restricted products. We then went on in the next paragraph to quote Community Pharmacy Scotland, who highlighted uh, one of the practical problems that they saw from having the same register, quoting again, um, the stigma of having to be on the tobacco retailers' registers will likely mean that many community pharmacists will choose not to supply NVPs. This will reduce the likelihood uh, of uh, vapors coming into contact with trained healthcare staff who may be able to advise them on reducing their use of NBPs or encourage them to enter NHS smoking cessation services. And the conclusion of the committee on uh, this was, uh, final quote, we have some sympathy with the view that NVPs should not be treated the same as tobacco by registering on the same register, given that the evidence indicates that NVPs are not as harmful as tobacco products and may help with smoking cessation. However, we also recognise the benefits of retaining the existing um, um, STRR. I'm not quite sure what that stands for. I'm just reading from the committee report. Uh, in terms of reducing bureaucracy and cost to retailers by building on existing practice. So I'm trying to, in a sense, reflect the committee's conclusions um, in my uh, amendment. So I'm certainly not going as far as Cancer Research UK. I'm accepting the principle of registration mainly because they are indeed an age-restricted product and we all want to prevent uh, young people, children and, and people, other young people uh, accessing uh, NVPs. So given that there is going to be a register and given that having two entirely separate ones might be problematic as the committee suggested, I'm trying to ensure two things in my amendments. Um, first of all, trying to make clear that uh, there are very distinct parts to uh, the uh, register. Section 8 of the bill, as drafted, amends the provisions in the Tobacco and Primary Medical Services Act that set up the register so that it covers NVPs as well as tobacco. My amendments would formally require the register to have separate parts, and that would mean that someone would have to apply to be on a distinct part of the register. So it's actually a very modest um, proposal um, which doesn't actually go as far as many of uh, the people giving evidence uh, wanted, but I think that's the least that we could expect. But I, I have gone a bit further in my amendments to Section 15, but again picking up a suggestion from the committee uh, about creating a, a register of age-restricted products. So Section 15 of the bill changes a number of sections and part titles so that they refer to the register of tobacco and NVP retailers. The amendments change that to retailers of age-restricted products. The committee, in suggesting that, uh, admittedly said that that should be something uh, that should be created in the longer term. But on reflecting on the committee's recommendations, I didn't really see any reason why we couldn't um, call the register that and, and in effect start uh, such a register at this particular uh, point. Clearly, uh, subsequent legislation could add to that. Um, the, the register with that title that I'm suggested would have three parts to begin with, but it would be quite easy for subsequent legislation to add additional parts to that register. So I just think it would deal with some of the problems that were described by those giving evidence if we actually called it from the start uh, a register uh, of age-restricted products. And in that way, we very publicly avoid the conflation of NVPs and tobacco, which so many of people uh, giving evidence uh, wanted to avoid. So I move to Amendment 13. No other members of the grant. Say in support of these amendments, um, there was concern that people using NVPs to quit smoking um, would um, get the right support because I think it was seen as being much more successful if people had um, went to a pharmacy, got an NVP, and got the the the, the counselling and support that went with it. And I know the pharmacists were particularly concerned about being registered as tobacco um, retailers because th they saw their their role as being health retailers rather than uh, retailers of something that was going to be harmful to health. So um, there was real concern in this area and it would be interesting to see or hear what the Minister has to say and how we go forward with this. 
Thank you. No one else. Minister. Thank you, Convener. Uh, I will speak to Amendment 13 and the other amendments in this group in Malcolm Chisholm's name. Amendment 13, which requires the register to comprise three parts, would have a practical impact on the structure of the register and therefore on the database which holds the register. It would require the entries in the database for each type of business to be held together and separately from entries for other types of business. This may restrict flexibility in how the register is managed and presented to the public. I realise that Malcolm Chisholm has lodged this amendment in response to concerns raised at stage one by some in the NVP industry and some retailers that a single register may appear to conflate tobacco and NVPs. However, I do not believe that this amendment alleviates those concerns. Whether or not Amendment 13 is accepted, the Bill retains the single register, the benefits of which were recognised by the Committee in the Stage 1 report, those be the benefits being reduced bureaucracy and reduced cost to retailers by building on existing practice. I do, however, understand the concerns. As the Committee knows, I have made a commitment to considering the outward-facing aspect of the register. My officials will explore opportunities to provide a clear separation between the two products on the website where the register is held. With regard to amendments 14 to 16, again I can understand that Mr Chisholm may have lodged these amendments with good intentions to try to alleviate those same concerns. However, renaming the title of the Register of Tobacco and Nicotine Product Retailers to the Retailers of Age Restricted Products does not, actually, does not accurately reflect what the register is. It is reasonable to believe that those seeing that title may expect that it is a register for all age-restricted products, for example, including alcohol, fireworks, knives, glue and a wide range of products. This is likely to cause confusion. <clears throat> the title contained in the bill accurately describes the contents of the register and I think if we were to begin to include all these other products, there would have to be a very wide consultation because um, it also includes um, justice uh, interest in this. So it may be an attempt to future-proof the legislation. However, uh, should there be a proposal in future to amend the legislation to include other age-restricted products, the titles associated with the register should be changed at that time. As I've already said, I do understand the concerns raised by some in the NVP industry and retailers, and that's why I've made a commitment to considering this issue during implementations. For these reasons, I'd ask the committee to reject amendments 13 to 16 in Malcolm Chisholm's name. Malcolm Chisholm, wind up. Well, I'm, I'm pleased that the Minister does recognise there is a problem, but I don't think the solution that she suggested of having a clear separation between the two products on the website is really a very um, substantive response uh, to the problem. Um, she said that in relation to the First Amendment, it would restrict the flexibility in how the register is managed and presented to the public. Well, we are trying to restrict the flexibility and how it's presented to the public. That's the point of the amendment, to make sure that it is presented in a certain way and not presented in another way. So uh, I, I would have to look further into uh, the, the, the problem that she highlights there in terms of flexibility of management. I, at the moment, I would have to say I'm a little sceptical about that. She also referred to concerns raised by though some in the NVP industry, but I think she will notice that all the people that I quoted had nothing to do with the NVP interest, uh, industry. We had um, Cancer Research UK with all their clinical expertise and scientific expertise. We had Professor Linda Bald, a professor of um, health, uh, uh, public health, and we had uh, Sheila Duffy, the director of ASH. So th this is not concerns from the industry, but concerns of those who want to promote health and stop people smoking tobacco. Um, in relation to the register of age-restricted products, um, I, I would want to reflect further on that uh, and particularly look into some of the issues that she raised around alcohol 
uh, fireworks, etc., because I think there are different regimes for different products. And uh, I, I would still want at stage three to, to, to revisit this issue. I'm quite happy to reflect on what the minister said, and if I can come up with a better way of dealing with this problem, then I shall certainly uh, aim to do that uh, at stage three. Uh, failing that, I may introduce one or other of these amendments at stage three. But uh, what I wanted to do today was to highlight uh, the problem. I agree that it doesn't have um, an easy solution, but I do think that, uh, and I think the committee acknowledged this, that we would like to uh, do something in response to the many concerns that were expressed about this. And uh, 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 given that uh, I, I've committed to uh, revisiting the subject at stage three, I'm quite happy to withdraw these amendments uh, today. Thanks, Malcolm. The Minister's also indicated that she would wish to come back in at this point, so I don't know whether it's... If I can... Yes, yes, yes certainly. I certainly just wanted Minister. to say um, that the distinct parts, um, as I understand Malcolm Chisholm, Chisholm's amendments, would only affect the database. It would not affect the presentation to the public. Uh, but between now and stage three, I'm quite happy to meet with Malcolm Chisholm if he would uh, like and to go over this together. I think that's a, a very constructive approach and, and, and hopefully the reflections of the committee report can be, we can make progress uh, through, the, through those discussions. Um, it's, it's, uh, you, you're withdrawing at this stage, Malcolm. You, yes? Yep. Mm -hmm. withdrawing. Uh, it's therefore, we proceed to uh, I've not had an indication that any other member wants to move it. No? Thank you. Um, the, the question is then that uh, i script out here. Question is that section eight be agreed to? Are we all agreed? Yes. Thank you. The question is that section nine be agreed to? Are we all agreed? Yes. Thank you. I now call amendment two in the name of the minister and the group on its own. Minister to move and speak to amendment two. Thank you, convener. I will speak to amendment two in my name. Tackling counterfeit trade in tobacco products is recognised in and forms part of the Scottish government's wider tobacco control strategy which seeks to reduce the availability of counterfeit tobacco in Scotland. This amendment will make a conviction which relates to the sale, possession and control of tobacco and NVP products where there is unauthorised use of a trademark count as a relevant enforcement action which could result in the local authority applying to the sheriff for a banning order. The aim of the offences under the Tobacco and Primary Medical Services Scotland Act 2010 as amended by the bill is to reduce the accessibility and appeal of tobacco, smoking-related products and nicotine vapour products to children and non-smokers. Including these counterfeit offences will strengthen that aim and it will also contribute to strengthening our approach to counterfeit tobacco and further public health gains and other public interest objectives. The committee considered written evidence at stage one including evidence from the Society of Chief Officers of Trading Standards, Aberdeen City Council and the Fife Health and Wellbeing Alliance, suggesting that these offences should count as relevant enforcement action. This amendment will support local authorities to strengthen enforcement action against irresponsible retailers who knowingly put the health of the public at risk and continually flout the law. <coughs> Trade of counterfeit tobacco is a serious offence. Whilst the Scottish Government is not aware of trade in counterfeit NVPs, there is potential for such a market to grow in the future. It therefore seems prudent to me to ensure that a conviction relating to the trade in counterfeit NVPs can also be caught as a relevant enforcement action. So I move Amendment 2. Thank you. Any other? No members? No. Um, Minister? Think you need to say anymore? <laughs> Thanks for that. The question is then: that Amendment two be agreed to? Are we all agreed? Yes. Thank you. The question is that section ten be agreed to? Are we all agreed? Yes. Thanks. The question is that section eleven to fourteen be agreed to? Are we all agreed? Yes. Thank you. 
I now call Amendment 14 in the name of Malcolm Chisholm, already debated with Amendment 13. Malcolm Chisholm, to move or not move? Not move. Member's not moving. No, 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 no other member wishes to pay the, the amendment? No. Thank you. Um, we now call Amendment 15 in the name of Malcolm Chisholm, already debated with Amendment 13. Malcolm Chisholm, to move or not move? Not moved. Not move. No other member wishing to, to move the amendment? No. Uh, we now call Amendment 16 in the name of Malcolm Chisholm, already debated with Amendment 13. Malcolm Chisholm, to move. Uh, not move. Not move. Thank you. Uh, no other member wishes to move the amendment? No. Um, the question is then that uh, section 15 be agreed to. Are we all agreed? Yes. Thank you. The question is that section 16 to 20 be agreed to. Are we all agreed? Yes. Thank you. Uh, that ends our stage two consideration of the bill for today. I would remind members that amendments uh, to the, remain the remainder of the bill should be lodged with the clerks in the legislation team by 12 noon this Thursday. Thank you, Minister, and your colleagues for your attendance this morning. Thank you. We now uh, suspend at this point, um, allow the panel to leave, and, and then we, we're going into sub-legislation. Yeah. Uh, we return to uh, our agenda item number two, which is subordinate legislation. We have two negative instruments before us. The first instrument, public bodies, joint working integration, joint boards, integration, joint monitoring committee, Scotland Amendment number two, order 2015 SSI 2015-432. There has been no motion to annul and the delegate, Delegated Powers and Law Reform Committee has, has not made any comments on the instrument. Um, I invite uh, any uh, comments uh, from the members. Rhoda? I suppose what was puzzling me slightly was that there was talk of a consultation, but there was no uh, information as to what the consultation responses were, and I think that would have been helpful. Um, you know, when we're considering it, to know what people mm. are saying. Um, usually in other instruments, when there has been a consultation, you at least get a summary of what the, you know, I'm not talking about a long summary, but, you know, that there were no concerns about this or whatever, whereas 
Um, it seemed to me that there was a fair amount of response to the consultation, but no information as to what they said. Yeah. Um, I mean, I think we can note that comment and, and, uh, uh, and even in retrospect, you know, attempt to get some feedback, but make the point for future that it may be useful for us in the future that, uh, that, that we did our, our understanding. Yeah? Yeah, and the other point I suppose well, it's a point of clarification whether people um, had um, a code of conduct that they would adhere to because they were self-reporting. Um, you know, it was up to them to decide whether or not they had a conflict of interest and if that's the case then there surely must be a code of conduct to go with it and that wasn't clear either. Okay. Apart from those comments, no others. Thanks. Um, uh, you know, taking the comments into consideration. But the, uh, does the committee agree to make no recommendation? Agreed. That's agreed. Then thank you. The second instrument is Food Scotland Act 2015 Consequential Provisions Number Two, Order 2015 SSI 2015-433. There's been no motion to annul the delegated powers and law reform committee has not have not made any. Comments on the instrument? Uh, do members have any comments? No comment from members. Uh, the committee, take it from that, the committee agreed to make no recommendations. That's agreed, thank you. We now um, move to agenda item number three, transplant, um, 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 uh, which we have previously agreed will be taken as normal in uh, a private session. Um, uh, we, now, we now move into private session. Thank you.